All right, Mark here again, cooking books, bringing information. So the question again is, I want to, I want us to discuss like the mind. What is it, so we can uh, really understand and have a better grasp of what the mind is and what it isn't. We want to work backwards. We want to talk about what the mind isn't before we discuss and and discover what it is. Uh, most people will tell you the mind is the brain. Uh, it isn't the brain, no more than the tire. Uh, a car tire. The air in the tire isn't the tire. The air is associated with the tire, but it's not the tire. The mind is associated with the brain in the same in the same sense, but it's not the brain. Uh, what the mind isn't isn't the brain. What it is, however, uh, the mind is a composition of brain waves. A brain waves. I'll say that again. The mind is a composition of brain waves. These brain waves store information, coded information. Uh, these waves are measured with uh, EEG, electroencephalograph, and MEG, uh, magnetoencephalograph, which I spoke of in previous videos. The EEG, the distinction between EEG and MEG is EEG measures specifically and solely exclusively the uh, activity of brain waves. That's it. And depending on the level of activity, you will either be in delta, theta, beta, or gamma. That's it. That is it. Just the measurement of the brainwave activity, depending on what that measurement is, it will place you in either of four waves. Gamma, not gamma, excuse me, uh, delta, theta, beta, and alpha. Uh, what MEG does, uh, what distinguishes it from EEG is MEG measures the magnetism of those waves. The, the magnetic, uh, it's, called magne little, it's called the magnetic moments. The magnetic moments is a measurement of the strength of the magnetism, its directionality and orientation. So again, uh, MEG measures the magnetism of the said waves. The EEG, the activity of the waves that EEG measures, magnetic magneto magneto encephalograph measures the magnetism of those waves how uh magnetic are they their strength and the strength of their magnetism is called magnetic moments uh within your brain there's areas that's called uh magnetic domains magnetic now not all magnet all magnetic domains are not all brain waves are equally magnetized or magnet or have the same magnetism or magnetic moment which is the strength of the uh magnetic force of those waves not all waves are equally strengthened in terms of magnetism so the magnetic domain it's simply regions in the brain that are uh, aligned right the electrons are aligned and the alignment of the elect each electron uh is a teeny tiny magnet in and of itself why because the electrons spin around an axis and creates uh, and generates a vibration that vibration creates a field so each field by itself is infinitesimal meaning it's negligible has no real uh, lasting and consequential significance however taken collectively when you're talking about billions of neurons all uh, aligned and uh, creating a magnetic domain that is all aligned then what we have is a more powerful or potent an extremely potent magnetism within that magnetic field and this is where MEG comes in and measures the strength of that of that individual field uh, but that field is collective when you're thinking about billions of neurons uh, why is that important because if you if we can uh, align if we can uh, align our magnetic domains, we can generate enough magnetism to attract to us the things that we want out of life because everything resonates at a certain frequency. Everything has a, a corresponding equivalence. Everything has it. Every desire that you and I desire has a corresponding equivalence. If you desire a house, a car, etc., 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 whatever that desire may be has a corresponding uh, physical equivalence right it has a corresponding physical equivalence so whatever you hold in your mind that you desire it has its uh core it has its uh physical equivalence out in the universe out in the world so if you're resonating if you're if you're magnetized and you have aligned your magnetic domains which are regions of the neurons if you have aligned them then what you're going to do you're going to create a very potent magnetic moment, which is, again, the strength of the force of the magnetism. Magnetic moments are the strength or the potency of the magnetism and its orientation. So if you align your magnetic moments, which are com constituent parts of the magnetic domain, you're going to be able to create a very strong force of magnetism that will draw to you the things that you desire. So the hard work is not going out there and working manual labor. The hard work is being able to 
uh, improve your character, improve your discipline, improve your thinking, your focus, your concentration, your focus and concentration, auto suggestion, self suggestion, uh, uh, affirmations, meditation. That is the hard work. Being able to discipline yourself like that will will be able. And here's what will happen: it will it will turn you into a a, a walking talking human magnet, ferromagnetism. You will become a ferromagnetic material. What you're going to do is you're going to transmute yourself into what's called a ferromagnetic material. And what will happen is your subconscious mind is going to, by means of direct and particular objects, it's going to create for you and bring you personally into the conditions, the circumstances, the situations, every the tools, the people, the finances, the, whatever the resources. It's going to bring every single thing in your media. Your media is your surrounding. The surrounding of a habitat, that's your media, your environment. It's going to find everything, every condition, every circumstance in that environment, and it's going to bring that or bring you to that moment where once though, once you align with the things in your surroundings, once you align, then that's called manifestation because now your goals, your dreams, your hopes, whatever it is you're working towards manifests itself by means of you working on you or magnetizing yourself. And that's the real hard work. It's going out there and working a nine to five every single day. You're just going to send yourself to the grave earlier and you're going to enrich someone else. You're just going to put money in someone else's pockets. Uh, what we're talking about right here is what billionaires, multimillionaires, top 1%, top 5%. This is what they know. This is not you and I might, you know, to the average Joe and uh, conventional and ordinary thinkers, Conventional thinkers will think what I'm discussing here is nonsense, spooky science, whatever, you know, whatever ism, they'll blow it off. But this is what the multi, multi millionaires know. This is what the top, top, top guys know. And if we are able to learn to put this into practice, uh, life really becomes magical.